All right. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Salvador Lopez, and I am the president of KConnect. Um, you are all here with us, uh, you know, this afternoon uh, because you're interested in hopefully learning more about the Roosevelt Park funding process um, and potentially submitting a proposal. Uh, this is a part of our neighborhood, our health. Um, you'll see kind of those um, acronym letters um, on the presentation, O-N-O-H. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue, but it stands for Our Neighborhood, Our Health. Um, we will be doing a similar presentation today in Spanish, and it will also be recorded. Um, so you are here because you may have received an email with more information, or may, you may have accessed a website uh, for Roosevelt Park funding that is available. And so... Um, I'll get off the chat because I don't want to have that on there. So, Mark, uh, you may have to let me know if there's a, a, a chat question or hopefully you can respond to it. Um, the awards are based on data collected by our neighborhood, our health uh, community advisory board in the Roosevelt Park neighborhood. There are three priority areas that were identified through that process, and it was health, public safety, and mental health. And so those are the three buckets that, that, that you'll see up on the screen. And you see there's a total of $200,000 being awarded by Corwell Health. And each bucket has a different amount that, that will receive uh, awards. Um, this is really based on the volume of data collected in terms of needs. So health will receive two awards for a total of 100,000. Public safety will receive two awards for a total of 70,000. And then mental health will receive two awards for a total of 30,000. The design principles are pretty straightforward, at least as we see them, and it's to be inclusive, transparent, equitable, and realistic. Um, and so inclusive, meaning to, that we want to make sure that the folks of, of Roosevelt Park, whether they live or work within the neighborhood, have access um, to, to the process, and it's an inclusive one in, in a language that they can understand. Um, so we're opening it up as, as much as possible as well across different languages. Um, and then we're working with a variety of interpreters and translators as needed to make sure that it's accessible. Um, transparent, it's, we have a website that we'll be walking through, but it's pretty straightforward in terms of how uh, folks may, may be able to apply. Equitable, um, making sure that we're using the the data from, from uh, the committee uh, in terms of the three buckets and making sure that the, the funding is going exactly where the, the community within the neighborhood said that the dollars should be going to. And then uh, being realistic, um, knowing that we have $200,000 total for this process and that that's not necessarily going to solve the root cause of a lot of issues, but hopefully um, the dollar amount will, will go towards something that can then snowball into something much bigger. At least that is the hope. Um, KConnect's role in all this is really the process, making sure that it's an equitable process for all. We are not um, seeking any dollars for, for um, from this project in terms of any proposals. And so that's that makes us um, uh, well positioned to to be, to really uh, oversee the process. We're also located in in the neighborhood. Our office is here. It's been here for for some years now, and so it's it's great to be a part of this project and, and be a part of helping co-design um, the, the the principles that you see there. Um, in addition, of in, in terms of the application process, organizations should submit a video online at RooseveltParkFunding.org. The video should be about five to 10 minutes in length. We really don't encourage folks to submit anything longer than 10 minutes. Uh, we encourage organizations to use a phone camera or, or Zoom. Um, please avoid editing videos and adding effects. Please avoid using anything like slide decks or presentations. It should really just be the person that's uploading the video talking about the initiative. Um, pretty straightforward in, in, in terms of what the questions will be. We'll go over them, but there will be six questions that folks need to answer when creating the video. And the video may be submitted using the language of preference. Now, organizations may apply in more than one priority area, but they will only be funded in the maximum of one priority area. So for example, there's health, mental health, and public safety. Um, an organization can apply for public sa safety and mental health but they will only receive funding in one of those areas. If submitting multiple applications, um, organizations should submit a video for each priority area. So if an organization is uh, applying for public safety, a video should be submitted for that. If they're also applying for mental health, a video should be submitted for that. Um, videos should include the name of the organization, the names of those on the video in the priority area that they are applying for. 
The application questions are on the website and I'll jump off of here in a minute and go there. Um, but the questions are up on, on the screen as well here. What's your favorite part of living and or working in the Roosevelt Park neighborhood? How long has your organization been operating in the Roosevelt Park neighborhood? What is your organization? Uh, what has your organization accomplished in the Roosevelt Park neighborhood in the past? What focus area of the three um, would you like to focus on and why? What are you proposing for funding from the, our neighborhood, our health initiative, and how much are you asking for? How would you measure the success of the program or initiative? In other words, if you're requesting funding for X dollars for X initiative, um, how do you plan to measure that? Do you, if, if you're, for example, applying to support 10 people in the neighborhood for X initiative, um, do you plan to follow up with those 10 people, for example, or something as simple as that? Um, we plan to do a check-in with the individuals that are granted awards um, sometime um, between the time that they get the award and by the end of the year one of funding, just to see uh, what kind of success um, those folks had, um, if not for any other reason. Um, in terms of uploading the video, th there's some um, some steps on here, but if we're using Google to, to share the video, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, Katie from our team um, helped us with the screenshot, so you see Katie's video there. But upload, uh, uploading a video from your phone is, is fairly straightforward. So for example, if you were to record five to 10 minutes for an initiative for an organization, you can use your phone. If you would like to be a little bit more advanced, if you will, and use Zoom and, and save it onto your computer, you could also do it that way, um, but it's pretty pretty simple. Once you um, you you must have a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account, you can create one for free, and then you could upload the video using that. Um, but there's it's it took me about three to five minutes or so to upload a video that I did earlier today, just as a sample. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, our team is also available to uh, to assist uh, with any technical uh, support. Um, we can even, because we are in the neighborhood, we could also go to you if, if absolutely necessary to make sure that that, that you're able to, to upload a video. Um, and we'll go over some of these details once I go on the website, but um, more to come on that. Um, in terms of interviews, um, we don't anticipate having a lot of interviews, but if an organization is selected as a finalist, let's say that we have uh, a number of, of applications that are that we need more clarity on, or someone maybe the video didn't come in as clear. There's technical issues. We may schedule a 30 minute video uh, minute virtual meeting to ask some questions, but they would really be the same questions that you've already seen. It's just more to obtain clarity um, to to further kind of um, send to the committee. Now the funding committee committee is will review applications, conduct interviews in award funding. It consists of three people, including the K-Connect president, and in this case, me, uh, a Roosevelt Park neighborhood representative, and a representative from our neighborhood, our health advisory group. Um, and so committee members um, should not have a conflict of interest, or in, in other words, committee members cannot be applying for funding. Um, we wanna make sure that it's someone that um, can really have um, that neutral um, lens uh, when reviewing all videos. And the neighborhood representative will be compensated for their time by the K-Connect community engagement compensation structure. Now, in terms of notification, once a video application is submitted, you will receive initial feedback within 30 days. In most cases, it's probably gonna be much quicker than that within 14 days. Um, we talked a little bit about the interview, the short interview may be scheduled if, if needed, but we're really looking for pretty much just the videos, some. Uh, a response from us and then moving it forward. All organizations with proposals will be notified of the funding decision regardless if they receive funding or not. So we wanna be rather quick with that. Um, a fiduciary, if an organization is, is small and needs a fiduciary, um, the Hispanic Center of Western Michigan is offering to be a, their fiduciary services free of charge for entities with less than $500,000 in terms of a budget. For those that may not be as familiar with what a fiduciary does, it's, it's another way of an organization, typically a bigger organization, um, holding funds and then dispersing those funds to a smaller entity um, because they have the, the infrastructure and the support to be able to do it. So you might be uh, an organization of two or three people and, and, and you have really not the, the infrastructure to be able to take on like $20,000 to your bank account. So the Hispanic Center would help with that process to make sure that they take uh, on the funds 
and then help you um, retrieve the funds as needed. But it's it's a pretty ethical way of making sure that um, funds are passed through an entity onto a smaller organization. And happy to answer more questions about that as well. Um, important dates, um, we, we started this process in April in terms of uh, having an advisory committee provide input. Uh, we launched the website um, the week of April 24th. Information, information sessions have been happening more individually, but now we're really kicking them up, kicking those information sessions up since the process is fully up on our website. Um, there has been an established committee um, that, that we talked a little bit about that will be making the decisions along with KConnect. Um, and then um, the deadline for submission of any application video should be by May 26th of this year. Um, the committee will review immediately uh, upon re uh, receipt of, of the videos and um, evaluate each video individually um, the week of May 29th. Um, potential interviews will be set up the, uh, the week of May 29th if absolutely needed. Um, the, the funding awards uh, will then take place the first week of June with distribution of funds on the June 5th. Um, and so um, as you can see by, by this, these important dates up there, it's a fairly quick turnaround. So as soon as folks are able to submit those videos, we can take a look at them and then we can um, respond uh, almost really immediately within a few days um, to make sure folks get a response. And so I'm gonna pause here um, and, and thanks for those that may have jumped on the call after we started. Um, for folks that just jumped on, um, this is being recorded. This is something that's going to be uh, on, on the Roosevelt Park uh, funding website. Uh, I'll pause here in case anyone has any question and Mark, jump in if I miss something. Hi, this is Jamila with Healthy Homes. What is the length of the contract? Is it a single year? Is it multi-year? It's a one-time funding. So it okay. is one time um, and, and, and there, there really isn't like an official contract other than you accepting the funds after applying. And okay. um, that one year check-in is all that's required. So within the year, we would contact you and say, hey, it's been you know, 11 months or close to 12 months. Um, where, where is the project at? What, what, what successes have you seen? What challenges have you maybe seen? And so it's going to be really low touch in, okay. in, in terms of the dollars. Once you have a project and an idea, you get the dollars and you execute it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, I have a question too. Um, <clears throat> so say in one of the rounds you have, um, you know, $100,000, but then you have um, applications that you've selected that amount to less than that. Would there be a situation where you would pick three or four awards if like, say, you know, two organizations ask for 20,000 and then two organizations ask for 15, like in that same category? Are you looking at just picking the the two groups or are you looking at spending the dollars that are in each category to you know like zero balance we we are looking to to spend all the dollars in all the categories so two hundred thousand dollars have to go out the door they're they're separated by way of volume of what the community said was needed and so from from health um, public safety and mental health and so we're looking to award a maximum we, we really are looking at at the kind of the being realistic with what this is, it's $200,000, right? And so if we award two awards in each category, we're looking to maximize the awards to make sure that all the dollars are out the door. So two for um, health, two for public safety, and then um, two for mental health. Uh, I hope that answers your question, but we are looking for, for collaboration as well. So let's say that, that you are partnering with another organization and and you both want to submit an application together, there still has to be a main point of contact. So it's gotta be one of y'all that submits it, but um, partnerships are also encouraged uh, depending on, on the ask, but it would only be awarded to, to one organization. So K-Connect can submit an application with um, First Steps can. This is an example, we're not actually gonna apply. And then, um, but K-Connect is the main point of contact. If dollars are awarded, they're coming to K-Connect and then, you know, any partnership that I have with First Steps Camp, that's up to K-Connect and First Steps Camp to arrange um, if, if that makes any sense. And so hopefully, did I answer your question about the dollars and the awards? But it's two awards per section, per category. 
You just do mute it again. Yeah, you you answer the question. Okay. Anyone else? Hey, Sal, this is Dr. Blue. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know, say for instance, someone else was in the public health arena um, applying for the 70,000 and they didn't want the entire 35 grand or, you know, if, if it was going to be split, how would that, how would we know what they're applying for? Because that can knock us out if we're asking for, you know, 35 and they're asking for, you know, 45, say for instance. No, that's that's a good question. I think it's 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 one of those situations where I think I would ask for what you need. Um, and so, if if you're looking for uh, an initiative where it's it's you're looking at realistically um, thirty five thousand dollars, that's what I would ask for. If you are um, submitting for something where you need more, I, I think that's maybe where a small interview. This is where we left the interview portion kind of open. If we have a situation where we have a number of different organizations, um, and, and and it's it's close uh, in that regard, if we get an overwhelming number, um, then we would have to figure that out on the back end and have those conversations with you and say, hey, you submitted um, your application for X amount, but would would it be helpful if it was? A little bit less or a little bit more. Those are the kind of conversations that can be had as we see the applications coming in. Because again, we want to get all the money out the door. And so for us, it's going to be about managing that and then having those conversations with the people that submit applications to 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 make sure that um, it's helpful. In some cases, you you may need like 50k, um, but in this case, you you might be only awarded 35,000, and that can help towards your goal. Um, and you might have to still seek funding for the rest. Um, that happens a lot in, in the funding world from, from, from what I've seen as well. So it, it could go towards something that you're working on as long as you can report on that within within the year and it's applicable here to Roosevelt Park uh, and, and the neighborhood. That That is the biggest thing that we're looking at. And then my next question is, do you have to be a nonprofit in order to do these funds? So that's a good question. So typically, you know, um, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't, I don't think there is a specific requirement that you have to be a, a nonprofit, nor is it a specific requirement that you have to have a 501c3 status or 501c4, um, as long as you have a, a fiduciary if needed. Um, so if you, if you need a, a an organization like the Hispanic Center has offered to do it for for free, um, to to obtain the funds and then get those funds to you. Um, that is all that that we need. It has not been officially designated only for nonprofits. The biggest thing is the impact that it's making in the Roosevelt Park corridor. That is that is the biggest um, thing that we're looking at in terms of uh, of the process itself. We anticipate. I saw someone say yes. I don't know what that means. what the yes means. What does that mean? Yes, um, you um, you know we, we anticipate a lot of nonprofits will will be applying, um, but it. Mark, correct me, it does not have to be a nonprofit in terms of official status, correct? That's correct. And, and that's why the uh, Hispanic Center is here as a fiduciary. It could be kind of a group of people, a person, um, a, an organization, um, but definitely kind of say that in your video submission, kind of who you're applying for. Well, when, when you it, said yes in the chat, Mark, were you just answering the question, can we have a copy of this slide deck? That's correct. Yeah. So yes, we can have a copy of the slide deck, but no, you don't have to be a nonprofit. Gotcha. Thank yes. you for the clarification stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've also heard instances where maybe the neighbor, the community, like there's a block of, of, of people that maybe are getting together to submit an idea that they live here. Um, I mean, they, they technically are in a nonprofit organization or technically an organization at all, but it's a group of people that, that want to make an impact here. Um, and they may use the Hispanic Center's fiduciary services to, to get the dollars organized and get up to, to that group. Uh, the biggest thing is making sure that the dollars are used for the purpose that the group is requesting. And so that's what the fiduciary kind of ethical component comes in. But it could be as, as, as easy as you all, a lot of you work in, in this neighborhood, you could be contacting different parents or neighbors and say, hey, have you heard about this like funding process? You should apply. Um, that's that that's really the, the core essence of what we're going for here um, with, with this work. Um, any other questions before I show you the website and kind of what that process looks like? 
Um, I see a question in the chat. How do we find groups to work with on this grant? Um, that is really um, by way of your network, um, word of mouth, kind of your your connections to, to the neighborhood itself. Um, it could be even some people in this call itself. Um, and so I would I would say reach out to to big organizations in Roosevelt Park and, and see if if there's any ideas kind of blooming um, within the neighborhood or, or the area. Any other questions from folks? Yep, and we will make sure that we send a copy uh, of the slides to, to everybody on the call. Um, and then we'll also put it on our website somewhere. I, I think we'll, we'll have to put it up there. Let me um, share my screen um, in just a second here and I'll kind of um, show you what the website side of things look like. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, the, the the website and, and Mark can put this in there is RooseveltParkFunding.org. Um, it is in Spanish. If you click in Espanol, you can actually see all of the information in Spanish. Um, we we can also make it accessible in other languages. So if you know of, of neighbors or, or anyone else that that may be wanting to to access this in other languages, we can make that happen. Um, and um, this is going to describe the three areas, the three focus areas based on on the dollar amount for each based on, on data obtained from the neighborhood. Um, a lot of the work that was done by Corwa Health and the Hispanic Center and many other folk, uh, focus groups and surveys that went out. Many conversations have been had about this for, for quite a while. Um, you can also see the video submission kind of rules, if you will, um, and you'll see all the application questions. In other words, the questions that, that need to be answered. We're in the process of, of, of fixing some of the stuff here because it's really six questions with um, number five asking what's the dollar amount that, that, that you would like uh, to submit for. Um, we talked a little bit about the funding committee. Um, in terms of the notification timeline, we talked a little bit about that. Um, if you want to learn more about the history, how, how all of this started, it, there's a good amount on here for you to, to take a look at every, everything from Corwell Health, King County Health Department and its work in the neighborhood, and then the three partners that, that are kind of working on this together to, to make this happen. And then it's it's going to be as easy as um, submitting the video should be as easy as first name, last name, your organization name, your contact email. And we're actually working on a, a link here that's going to give access to, to Google. Uh, it's, it's, it's much easier than Dropbox because Dropbox, I think you have to have an account you have to potentially pay for it. So we want to make it as accessible as possible. So what's going to happen is folks are going to put their first name, their last name, organization, their contact email when they're ready to, to upload a video. And then we will send those folks um, a, a special link where you can upload your video from your computer or from your phone. So once you're ready to, to apply um, and you've created a video somewhere on your phone or computer, you can actually submit that very short form with your name and your email, and then we will send you a very unique link for you to upload your video. I think I heard maybe Maritza or is, 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 does anybody have any questions? All right, so I am, um, I'm going to stop recording for just a second and then we can continue the conversation, but I want to make sure that I stop so it's not a giant video. So thanks for those that have been asking questions. <laughs> 